All right, here comes the first of several problems off of our final review packet. We are going to be looking at a few problems from each section, and then we will, yeah, continue our quest to review for the final. So it says problems one through six were in the first section. It says using triangular congruence conditions, determine whether or not the triangles are similar. If they are congruent, write a congruent statement, and how do you know? So basically, we're going to do a flowchart proof for every single problem. Some of these triangles will be similar. Some of these triangles will be congruent. And some of them will be nothing. So we have to just kind of go through and see where the, the path kind of takes us. Uh, I've got two triangles here. We have some given information here. We are given that angle A is congruent to angle D. They told us that. Right? And again, they told us that based on this information here. Angle C is congruent to angle F. So I'll go ahead and just label those corresponding parts how uh, they are congruent and then they're saying that BC is congruent to EF meaning they are the same so again if I just write down the information that they gave to me I can say that angle A is congruent to angle D All right, and that was given I can say that angle C is congruent to angle F and again that's given and then it seems like all of the information is given, right? So BC is congruent to EF. Now, because I have all of this information, can I conclude, can I conclude that, this, that the triangles are congruent? Well, I think so, because I have an angle, an angle, and a side, and AAS is a congruence theorem. So I can say, therefore, triangle, I can say A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, F. And then that is my final thing here. These pieces of information allow me to make such a conclusion. And my reason for that is angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side, Kong. Okay, so there goes the first problem. I will do another problem in just a second. And we're back with number six. So again, I'll probably just do two problems from each section. If you need uh, to see another problem again, just have our our substitute teacher go ahead and scroll back, and we can go and see that first problem again. But we're on problem number six here. And so again, I'm going to try and determine either similarity or congruence. Based on what I'm seeing right here, I'm leaning towards congruency. I know that, and even though they didn't tell me this by using a list, these hash marks, if I need to remind you, will tell you that the triangle, uh, that these sides of the triangle are congruent. So it, I can say that AB is congruent to CD. And that's given. Right? That information is given to me. Uh, what else do we know? We know that, um, we know that BC is congruent to, uh, looks like, DA. Again, if we're just going to try and keep our letters straight here. And again, that's given. So let's say we've got two sides. Now, the only thing that can happen here that would allow for congruence would be either an angle in between these sides or a third side. And I think you guys are already seeing it. It's this dude. AC is congruent to CA. Now, the question is, is what allows for that to be true? What, what statement, what is my justification for AC being congruent to CA, and you are correct. It is our good old buddy reflexive that comes back. So these three ideas combine out together so that I can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle. If I did ABC, I can do CDA. And then our reasoning for that is side, side, side. So SSS Kong. And there's our congruent statement. So I'll move on to the next section, and then we will go from there. OK, so it looks like we're on 7 through 12 now, which emphasizes just similarity and not so much congruence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare these two triangles to see if they are similar. Now, there's a couple of different theorems we could use for, uh, for similarity. A lot of them are very much similar to congruence, except there's just a little bit of a looser kind of interpretation. So if I see this triangle real quick here, this uh, PRQ triangle, I'm going to go and rotate him because I really like to see corresponding parts line up 
you know, in terms of my drawing. It helps me see it a little bit better. So I'm guessing the R goes here, the P goes here, and the Q goes here, which means this is going to be 12, PQ is 18, and RQ is 24. So I could use side, side, side. Uh, that's what I'm thinking, because we're given three sides on the small triangle, three sides on the large triangle, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and compare their scale factors. I can say that MK is to PR. In other words, I can say 10 is to 12. And I want to know if that's going to be equal to ML over PQ, right? So that would be 15 over 18. KL would then be compared to RQ. And again, I'm just using all three sides because they give us all three sides of the triangle. So I might as well see if they all reduce into the same idea. So if I divide both of these by 2, I get 5 over 6. If I divide these both by 3, I get 5 over 6. And if I divide both of these by 4, incidentally, I get 5 over 6, which leads me to believe that this is our scale factor, which will be my justification in every single um, similarity statement that I say here. So I can say that MK is not congruent, is similar to RP. And my reasoning for that would be scale factor equals 5, 6. And in fact, I think that's going to be my reasoning for all three of them, right? Um, I can also say that ML is, again, not congruent, but similar to PQ. All for the same reason, right? Scale factor equals 5, 6. And then, uh, let's see, KL is similar to RQ. And again, the reason behind that is exactly like what we've talked about before. Scale factor equals 5, 6. And then uh, from here, you just have to link them all in. So you can say that triangle MLK is similar to triangle PQR. And the reasoning for that is not side, side, side congruence, but side, side, side similarity. And that's number 7. If you need to see this again, go and have our substitute teacher scroll back, and you can see this problem one more time. So again, the key element in this, in this problem here is knowing that the scale factor was the same on all three sides and using that as our similarity justification. All right, so now we are on the next problem. And I'm going to kind of cheap out on this one a little bit because I think obviously we know what the answer is. Uh, we got these triangles here. There is nothing about them that indicates anything. I mean, it's just one angle is congruent, and unfortunately... If we had a second angle, then we could determine congruence, but unfortunately we don't. So there's just actually, there's not enough information here. So not enough info to determine similarity. Okay? And so, yeah, it's just because we just have that one angle right there. It's not like we have another side or a couple sides to deal with or another angle. So unfortunately, that's as far as we can go with this problem. Okay, so that's it for the first page. We will move on to the next video in just a few minutes.